welcome back to another one. If you were new to the channel, I'm Gold Tony. I typically do new car reviews on YouTube. However, all of the dealerships are closed right now. So we will be resuming that once they do open back up. And in the meantime, today I wanted to do a video on automatic versus manual, which is really better because quite often I am asked the question, why in the world did you go with the 10 speed automatic in the Mustang? And really it's going to be different for every single car out there. So this video is going to apply essentially to the automatic versus manual question in general. And I will give you my personal opinion when it comes to the Mustang at the very end of the video. But the thing is though, after driving and reviewing 491 cars at this point, I've come to the conclusion that not all manuals are created equal. There are certain cars that do offer both manual and automatic. Sometimes it's better to go with the automatic. Sometimes it's better to go with the manual for various different reasons. And they're gonna be outlining them in this video today. Also going to be generally telling you which manufacturers do the manual transmission the best than the manuals that you do wanna actually buy and some of them to stay away from if all possible and of course I'll also be going over if a manual transmission is actually right for you and my personal opinion when it comes to the Ford Mustang when it comes to automatic versus the manual so what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it determining if a manual transmission is actually going to be right for you and so I believe this statistic is now 1.2 percent of new cars come with a manual transmission which means 98.8 percent of them do not, and there is reason for that because manual transmissions, if you're commuting to work, can be a pain in the butt if you get stuck in rush hour traffic. A lot of people aren't gonna wanna deal with pushing that clutch pedal in and out constantly in a one hour commute to work or whatever your commute is going to end up being. So that is definitely one of the reasons you may not wanna go with a manual. But on the flip side, you may wanna go with a manual if your car is under power. This is one of those deals where certain cars, when they give you the option of automatic versus manual, cars like the Mazda Miata, for instance, cars like the Toyota, 86 or Subaru BRZ. These are the cars that are slightly underpowered and you're definitely going to want to go with the six-speed manual for those particular engine setups as well because they are meant to be fun cars. However, with the lack of power there, unless you're going to go all out modifying it, it's definitely going to give you more driver enjoyment if you were to go with the manual transmission as opposed to the automatic with those. Another reason you might want to pick a manual transmission is if you live in a neighborhood where cars are often stolen. And I realize this isn't going to apply for everybody, but for a lot of people it is. So manual transmission transmissions are kind of like anti-theft devices in themselves so definitely another reason you might want to go with the manual at least if you're at all worried about your car being stolen so six-speed manual is definitely going to help out with that also another thing i wanted to bring up if you're a new driver new drivers i believe should go with six-speed manuals or five-speed manuals whichever just because of the sure fact everyone has a smartphone these days and drivers are much less inclined to be on their smartphone if they have the responsibility of rowing through their own gears because there's a lot more you have to pay attention to when you have a six-speed manual transmission as opposed to the automatic where the car does basically all the work for you so it's another reason I think first-time drivers should go with manual transmissions that's another thing to consider as well and ultimately a manual will be more engaging and it's gonna be less expensive to purchase and if anything goes wrong with it it's gonna be less expensive to fix comparatively speaking to an automatic transmission at least so those are some of the pluses of a manual transmission however on the flip side an automatic transmission is going to be better for you for several reasons as well well, like if you commute to work in rush hour traffic, that's definitely going to be a better option for you. You don't have that clutch pedal to have to fiddle with. Also, the transmission is going to shift a lot quicker. It's going to be a lot smoother than it otherwise would be rowing through your own gears in a manual. And for the most part, when you look at any particular vehicle these days, if they offer both a manual and an automatic, the automatic is almost always going to be a lot quicker than the manual as well. For example, this Ford Mustang GT I'm currently in right now, zero to 60 time for the six speed comes in at around 4.3 seconds. For for the 10-speed automatic, however, 3.9 seconds, so substantially quicker. So if you're looking for a quicker car, typically the automatic is gonna be the better option. In addition to that, you also get better gas mileage with the automatic, and really, if you wanted the pleasure of shifting through your own gears, most cars these days come with paddle shifters, and some of them are pretty darn good, like the Mustang's pretty darn good with them, but sometimes paddle shifters can be seriously delayed when you actually hit them, and those really aren't that fun, so. But for the most part, that really can give you the best of both worlds, if you have quick reacting paddle shifters at least. But so now having got all that out of the way, like I said, I've driven and reviewed approximately 500 cars at this point, and some manufacturers definitely do the manual transmission better than others, so I wanted to cover some of those manufacturers for you guys, in case you were curious, in case you were considering getting a six-speed manual transmission. So these are some of the manuals that you definitely wanna go with. For instance, any Honda, really any Honda whatsoever with the manual transmission is going to be 100% on point. Little backstory for you guys, I actually learned how to drive manual transmission on an old 
Honda S2000. Honda S2000 is one of the most enjoyable manual transmissions to drive because it had extremely short throws, a very short throw shifter, and it revved up to 9,000 RPM, which is absolutely crazy in today's standards. A lot of cars will rev to like 6,500 or 7,000. Sports cars typically go up to around 7,500 these days, but nobody goes up to 9,000 RPM anymore. So I love that the Honda S2000 did that. But so anyways, Honda, that, that's what <laughs> Mazda Miata is definitely another one you want to go with the six-speed manual as opposed to the automatic. Toyota 86 or Subaru BRZ. Not that the automatic transmission is bad, but again, those cars are underpowered and the six-speed manual is definitely where you're going to want to be at with those two. Subaru WRX is actually, a lot of publications will say that's somewhat of a notchy shifter. And at first, I kind of agreed with them, but like any manual transmission, you do get used to it. And I feel like when I test drove and reviewed the 2020 WRX and STI this year, it was a lot easier to shift. I think I got used to it. It's actually quite fun to row through the gears in those things. But the reason I put that one on the list as well, even though people say it's notchy, is the alternative is a CVT, a continuously variable transmission. And we all know those are absolutely emotionless. And you definitely do not want to go with the CVT in a car like the WRX. So that's why I put that one. Definitely want to go six speed manual with the Subaru WRX at least. Volkswagen Golf is another one with a little golf ball shifter. I would just get the manual for the golf ball shifter really. Nissan 350 370Z, whichever. Really, those cars are meant to be drift cars. So if you're going to be drifting the 370 or 350Z, definitely want to go with the 6B manual there. And not to mention, I reviewed the 2020 370Z this year. I absolutely loved that shifter. The grab points were amazing. Clutch feel was great. Definitely one of my more favorite manual transmissions to drive. A lot of people sometimes have this mindset that the higher up in power you go with manual transmissions, the more difficult they are to drive and you get used to it, quite honestly. I've driven Roush supercharged Mustangs paired up with six-speed manuals, and they have over 700 horsepower. At first, yeah, it takes a little bit getting used to, but then it's just like any other manual transmission. You get used to it in like a split second, and then it's so easy to drive. What I'm trying to say is don't worry about buying a more powerful car paired up with a six-speed manual, because you're definitely gonna get used to it, if that's something that was even running through your mind whatsoever. Also, another one I forgot to mention, the uh, Chevy Camaro. That is definitely another one you wanna go with the six-speed manual. Well, not that the alternative is bad, that's what I got, but the six-speed manual and the Chevy Camaro, their manual transmissions are made by Tremec, which is a very well-known manufacturer of manual gearboxes. Specifically, they also manufacture the Shelby GT350's manual transmission, which I absolutely love driving. I reviewed the GT350 a couple times at least now, and the manual in that particular setup is absolutely amazing. But so everyone's asking at this point, why in the world did you go with the 10-speed automatic in your Ford Mustang GT? Here is the reason. If that Tremec was also used in the Mustang GT like it is in the Camaro, I probably would have gone with the six-speed manual because quite honestly, they are more engaging. They're more fun to drive. They're not quite as quick. And that was something that was in the back of my mind as well. But when it comes down to it, the four Mustang GT, when it comes to their six-speed manual transmission, they use what is called the MT82 six-speed manual. And so I will say when it comes to the 2015 through 2017 four Mustang, those gearing ratios were 100% on point. I absolutely loved driving that manual transmission in that particular setup. Once 2018 hit, the gearing ratios changed. It felt a little different to me. Clutch feel was different as well, and they changed a lot with the six-speed manual when it comes to the MT82, starting in 2018, including the shift fork. There was a very well-known shift fork issue that was going on in 2018. Really not sure if they fixed it for 2019 or not. I hope they did. But that was in the back of my mind as well. You know, what's the point of buying a fun car if it's just gonna be in the shop all the time and you're not gonna be able to drive it? That is one thing that would have bothered me like crazy. If things go wrong with my car on the cosmetic side of things, I'm not gonna really mind that much to be quite honest. But if things go wrong with my car mechanically, that's gonna bother me. So in the end, the reason I chose the 2019 from Mustang GT with the 10 speed automatic, it's faster, it's more reliable, and it gives you paddle shifters that are pretty darn quick to shift through your own gears if you wanted to. So really, I got the best of both worlds, better MPGs. It's really the better transmission for this car, in my opinion, all around, at least starting in 2018 and up. And I know somebody is going to say at this point in the comments, I have the MT82 and my car has been perfectly fine. Yeah, a lot of them are. My particular knowledge is coming from the four dealerships that I work with, all of the mechanics that I've spoken with when I'm filming my car getting worked on inside the dealerships. All in all, the general consensus is that the 10-speed automatic 
is better than the six-speed manual. So that's why you have people like Xander 13, my man Alex, Stang Mode. They also went with the automatic as well. And there is good reason, and those were the reasons that I just listed for you guys. Again, not that the MT82 is bad. If you really are a diehard manual fan, you should like it. But all I'm saying is that it could be better. So if you're on the borderline between the two, the 10-speed is probably going to be the way to go. But in the end, circling back here, is the automatic better or is the manual better? The short answer is it ultimately comes down to the individual cars themselves because not all manual transmissions are created equal. And having said that, if you are a first time manual transmission buyer and you are looking to learn how to drive manual, I will leave a link to my tutorial on how to drive manual at the end of this video. I actually filmed that in a 707 horsepower Hellcat, so that should be fun for you guys if you wanted to learn how to drive manual at least. But if not, that's cool too. Do appreciate you guys watching either way let me know which one you prefer in the comments section below feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold